singing songs, having fun. I want to go to learn about God's own son. Let's all go to My name is Jones, Red Jones, Agent 0014. I'm here at the secret rendezvous spot. I guess it's time to check in with headquarters. Let me activate my nifty two-way radio watch. Hello, HQ. This is Agent 0014 reporting. Is the chief there? 0014, this is the chief. Can you read me? Loud and clear, chief. What's my assignment? 0014, this will be the most important assignment of your life. The fate of the entire world hangs in the balance. Are you up for it? Absolutely, chief. Lay it on me. This is too important for radio transmission. I must make sure you understand perfectly what you're supposed to do. Roger, Chief. So, how do I get my instructions? I'm going to meet you myself and give you the instructions. You? In person? The Chief actually coming to talk to me? Get a grip, Double O. I'll be there in a few minutes. But, sir, we've never met. How will I know it's you? Remember the password, Double O. You got it, Chief. This is headquarters signing off. Over and out. Boy, this has got to be big. Nobody has ever seen the Chief in person before. I hope I don't mess this up. recognize a chief. He's a master of disguises. He could be dressed as anything. Hmm. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Maybe he can't hear through the disguise. I'll say it louder. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. What are you doing? Oh, hi, Papuli. Um, I wasn't doing anything. It sounded like you were yelling about a bear to that phone stand. If you must know, I said Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. <gasps> then Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't Fuzzy, was he? No. You, Papuli? You are the chief? 
in person. But what kind of a disguise is that? Have you looked at yourself, Reg? Well, you can't be too careful, Chief. Are you ready for your assignment, 0014? Yes, what is it? First, memorize this message. Everyone has sinned and cut themselves off from God. But God loves the world so much that he sent his only son, Jesus. Everyone who confesses his sin and receives Jesus as his Savior has a brand new life and will live with God forever. Got that? Everyone has sinned and cut themselves off from God. But God loved the world so much that he sent his only son, Jesus. Everyone who confesses his sin and receives Jesus as his Savior has a brand new life and will live with God forever. Got it. I'll guard this secret with my life. No one will ever know. Wait a minute. Your assignment is to tell everyone this message. What? But I can't be a secret agent if I go around telling everyone secret messages. 0014, there is no secret Christians. Jesus died for us. We can't keep a thing like that a secret. I get it. Jesus died for us. I have to tell everyone. After Jesus rose, he walked for many days on the earth. Then, before he went back to heaven, he told his followers to go out into all the world and tell everyone the good news about how he came to save them. Some people call that the Great Commission. Oh, oh, yeah, the Great Secret Mission. And next week's Bible lesson, shh, someone's coming. Quick, duck. <laughs> Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. The joy to believe? Yes. The joy to believe? Yes. The joy to believe? Yes. Who's the Lord shall come from the end of the world shall be saved? Good morning, kids. I have a question for you. Do you know somebody who doesn't believe in God? Well, the man in our story doesn't believe in God. And it's the story of Jane's father. Jane's father laughed at her when she asked him to go to church with her. Why should I want to go to church, he asked. I'm not a Christian, you know. You and mother go as much as you want to, but you had better let me stay home and do the lawn. It's going to begin looking like a hay field around here. But daddy, Jane said, it's awfully important to go to church. It's important to know about God and to know what he wants us to do. I don't think I believe in God, Jane's father said. Why does he let so many people get sick and hurt? And anyway, I'm too busy to think about God because I have to think about my work. So Jane and mother went to church and daddy stayed home to mow the lawn and read the paper. Jane was very sad. Just last night, she had prayed again, asking God to make her daddy become a Christian and love Jesus too just like Jane and her mother did. I know God is going to answer my prayer about Daddy, Jane told her mother, but I wish that it would be soon. Perhaps it will be, dear, her mother said. We'll just keep praying about it. While Jane and her mother were at church, Daddy read the paper for quite a while and then went out to mow the lawn. But Daddy didn't seem to be enjoying Sunday at home as he usually did. He kept thinking about what Jane had said. He said to himself, I wish I were as kind and nice as my little girl is, and as my wife is. They go to church and believe in Jesus and God, and they are kind and nice. I don't go to church and don't believe in Jesus and God, and I'm not kind and nice. I wonder, if I went to church, if it wouldn't help me to be kinder, as I want to be. Daddy kept mowing the lawn. He liked to mow lawns. It made him feel good. And he liked to see the grass coming out of the lawnmower and the nice smooth patch of grass after the lawnmower had been over it. But this morning it didn't seem very much fun to mow the lawn. He couldn't think of anything 
that it would be very much fun to do. Finally, he left the lawnmower out on the lawn and went into the house and looked around the bookcase until he found the Bible. Jane and her mother read this book an awful lot, he thought, and I used to read it when I was a boy. I remember there was a verse I learned once in the book of John. I think it was chapter 3. It was about God loving me and sending Jesus to die for me. I wish I could find it. Jane's father finally found the book of John and the third chapter and began reading it. Finally, he came to the 16th verse, and this is what he read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Good, said Jane's father. That's it. That's the verse I used to know. He read the verse several times and then went out to mow the lawn again. He kept thinking and thinking about that verse. God loves me, he said to himself. Jesus died for me. And then he continued. But I don't believe in God, so I don't believe that verse. Then he began to mow the lawn as fast as he could and tried to forget what he had read in the Bible. The next morning, when Daddy was driving to work, he couldn't forget the verse that he had read on Sunday morning. Just think, he said to himself, Jesus died for me, and God loves me. Then all of a sudden, he slowed the car down and brought it to a stop at the side of the road. He bowed his head and said, God, thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I believe in you, and I want you to save me. Thank you for saving me. Daddy seemed very happy when he got home from work that night, but he didn't tell Mother and Jane what had happened. In fact, he kept it a secret for a whole week. But the next Sunday morning when Jane said, Daddy, I wish you would come to church with us this morning, he said, Why, sure, I've been planning on it. Jane was so surprised, she hardly knew what to think. Then Daddy told Jane and Mother what had happened, and of course, they were very happy. Before they started for church, Jane went up to her room and knelt beside her bed and said, Thank you, God. Oh, thank you for helping our whole family to love you. All right, here are your questions. Number one, did Jane's father believe in God at first? Number two, what did Jane do? Number three, tell about how Jane's father found the Bible verse and what happened then. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and it is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Boy, that's a long verse today, but it's a very, very important verse because it tells us how important the Bible is. The Bible has the power to get right into the heart of someone and to change it. So think about that today and talk about it with your parents. And remember, until next time, be safe and Papa loves you. Son of God, he died and rose for you. How many of you love chocolate? Anyway, if you love chocolate, then you know the name Hershey. Mr. Milton Hershey loved two things, children and chocolate. Believing that the two should always go together, in 1908, he built a chocolate factory in rural Pennsylvania. 
making chocolate was the easy part. The hard part was going out and selling the chocolate. The experts told him that the only way that he could sell his chocolate bars would be to pay people to tell others. That's called advertising. Of course, advertising does sell products. When a toy company comes out with a new toy, they tell about it on TV. That costs a lot of money. So they usually raise the price of the toy to include the advertising. Mr. Hershey refused to do this. He said, if my product is good, people will tell others about it and they will tell even more people. And that's exactly what happened. For years and years, the Hershey bar was the only nationally enjoyed product in America that was never advertised on the radio or in magazines. Mr. Hershey was a very smart man. He was also a good man. He built an orphanage that helped thousands of children since then. So let me ask you, when you eat a delicious candy bar, did someone have to pay you to tell how good it was? Or maybe you just thought it was good and as a satisfied customer, you would just go around telling the truth about how much you loved it. Now, if you believe in Jesus and you know that he is the best friend ever, would he have to pay you to tell other people that? After all, he didn't say, Go into all the world and I will pay you to be my witnesses. Hmm. I think the coast is clear, Chief. As I was saying, in the Bible lesson, Jesus gave us the example about sharing the good news with other people, even if they are different than we are. The gospel is for the whole world. Okay, Chief. So my mission is to go out and tell everyone the good news about Jesus? Um, okay, well, what is it, Double O? Well, it's just that, speak up, Double O! Well, Chief, you might not know this about me, but I'm not always the best secret agent. Oh, you're kidding. No, really, and, well, what if I mess up? This is such an important mission. What if I don't say the right thing? 
double O, don't worry. Do you think God would send you out on the most important mission of your life without backup? God tells us that he will always be with us. Just pray and stay close to him, and he will give you the right words to say. Oh, wow, that is so cool. But, um, what is it now, double O? Well, chief, it's just that the world is an awful big place. How am I going to tell everyone about Jesus all by myself? That's the great part about the assignment, double O. This is an assignment for all Christians. All Christians? Even kids? That's right, even kids. We all have an assignment to let as many people know about Jesus as we can. Just like when Jesus told the woman, and then the woman told the whole town. That's right, double O. We are all special agents in God's service, and we've got a license to tell. A license to tell? Oh boy, we can reach the whole world if we all work together. And no more secrets, double O. Be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way. Be it in a town, a country, or a busy avenue. Woo! Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. So be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way. The Lord is soon returning, there is no time to lose. So be a missionary. God's own emissary.